But we might, have a lot of fun. They'll probably don't fire me after this year. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, that's what Bo's thinking. I can tell back to him about Bo. <laughs> Bo's thinking, we need to get rid of him. <laughs> well, you do a great job, Tom. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. You know, checks in the mail. But anyway, <laughs> and my other guests are in the studio right now is Mr. R.J. Seifert, publicist for Bobby Mackey. Hey, Tom. Glad to be here. Thanks so much for having us. And you are most welcome. R.J.'s my hero. Uh -huh. Oh, he taught me everything I know. He kept, uh, kept uh, uh, Bobby Mackey's with the team Mackey going for all those years. He's got it. Oh, he does have it. He, he, he does have it. In fact, I think I, I, I wrote something on, on a post that he did over the weekend, and I said, RJ is the man. Did you, did you check that <laughs> I one did out? see that. I figured it. I knew you had made a mistake. You made a horrible mistake. <laughs> I made a horrible mistake. Well, I probably made a few of them. But <laughs> anyway, thanks, guys, for coming in this morning. Uh, we, got, we got lots to... Uh, uh, talk about Bo. If you want a chair, grab a chair, Bo. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's going on Thursday night and uh, all of the great acts that are going to be there, and mainly the fact that this is a free event. Oh yeah, we always emphasize that free. You know, everybody says if it's free, it's for me. And <laughs> I'll drink. I'll, I'll drink to that. But I have to drink no. um, Coke syrup. <laughs> this is uh, well. This is our seventh year, and started out 2013, and um, uh, we've been at the Fort Thomas location now for, for the six of the seven years. It's a great location. Beautiful venue right in the middle of Fort Thomas. Yeah. And it also it can hold a lot of people. There's a lot of parking down there. And um, the Fort Thomas has just opened their arms to us. And it, it's, there's a, there's a, we have a display every year of what all of our inductees have done. And it's uh, in a, a large old mess hall in the fort there. It's a great place to display what they've done all these years. Right. But this, uh, this year we've got um, somebody you probably know pretty well, uh, Gary Strong. No, we know Gary very well. G Gary actually uh, was at AIF for a while. And then he wound up going to, to uh, Richmond, Kentucky, and then to uh, the old SAI when they were playing country. He's um, a great blue, bluegrass musician. Yes, he is. He plays at all the big festivals all out throughout Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, and uh, he'll be there. And the, he's one of the inductees, actually. In fact, I yes. believe I'm inducting him you into are. the uh, Hall of Fame. Right, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, you will, will, will ex tell people what he's done, but he's a great bluegrass musician and a great guy, too. Yep. Uh, the next one we have would be Woodwind Steel. Woodwind Steel was as far as a musical group, were outstanding. They were four guys, but with their harmonies and their music ability, they sound like an eight-piece group. And all musicians sing the praises of Woodwind Steel because they know how, how good they are. They played uh, for years and years and years at the a, uh, Hilton Hotel up at the airport, and they played a, a, around Oh, just uh, numerous places. They were, back in the uh, 80s, they were the top five band in, in the area. Yeah. Uh, next we will have... Before you, before you go on, John, just, just a note. I um, worked with them uh, two or three New Year's Eves as, <laughs> when I was a DJ, and they were the band that played in between my breaks and uh, down at the Briarwood in Hebron, Kentucky. And, uh, you could see how good they were. Oh, I, I loved I loved working with those guys. They were just so so talented and great guys to boot. They are. They really yeah. are. And uh, really really enjoyed my time working with them. They they retired about um, six or seven years ago, 
And now they've been practicing for, for, for a couple months here. They're all anxious to get back at it. Oh, like wow. all musicians, right? They may quit, but they, they, re they really miss it. Yeah, well, know that feeling. Yeah, yeah they know, have, know that feeling for sure. As you get old, they don't miss the load and go, but they love the sing. No, no. <laughs> personally, I can't load and go. <laughs> That's what's happening. Bo, Bo was going to offer me a, a gig. As a roadie for the band, but I had to turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> You'd last about uh, two and a half minutes, right? Um, maybe that. <laughs> maybe less. And, you know, I wouldn't want to get canned, you know, my first uh, you know, time trying to set up the amps and stuff. Anyway, I digress. Go ahead. Uh, the next one is uh, Rick Kimmon, another talented musician. Uh, Rick is, does something that fascinates me that all musicians do. He, and he knows several hundred songs, country, rock, oldies, jazz, and he actually see, he plays every night at Sisses in, in Newport. He's sitting, uh, he plays the keyboard, and then he's got his guitar on it, too. So he's, he's playing both instruments during the song, and a great sound of music, and, you know, what fascinates me about musicians is they can memorize all the songs, all in their head. It, it's just hard to translate. I sing a karaoke and I know three or four songs, and I still have to look at the board there to see what the words are. <laughs> yeah, but you know, in, in, in all fairness to those of us that you know can 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 do the, the vocalization, I mean, I never did like karaoke. I I, I never uh, Brandon <coughs> Brandon over at Bobby Mackey's for. The, probably the first two years I was there, he'd come up and say, you want to get up and, you want to get up and do karaoke? <laughs> My answer to him is, no, I don't do karaoke. <laughs> only time I sing is with a band. It's the only time I sing. So. And believe me, there is a difference. All these karaoke singers think they're really hot shots. But they, <laughs> because they got the words there, and they got the cue, when to come in, when to go out. Yeah, the yeah. first time I sang with a band, because it was a karaoke place down in Newport, and I think, Oh boy, this is different. Oh my goodness! But it's that's what happens. Yeah, it's a whole the, different. It's a whole different it world. It is. Bo, did you ever do karaoke? No, I, I do do it from time to time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> the, the, depending on how much Jim Bean's out there. Jack. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, Jim, I get persuaded. Some of my friends don't persuade me to do stuff. I'm such a but it sure is a big difference when you have to you have to know when to come in, when to come out. And, yeah. yeah, I know when to get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been thrown out a couple times it's, when it's, I first started. It's the coming in part that gets you. Yeah. You know? Go ahead. Well, our last one is uh, Steve Chu. If you never heard Steve, he is. A great Elvis singer, and I say Elvis singer. He's not an Elvis impersonator. He's not like the guy that goes around 24/7 saying, "Thank you, thank you very much." No, he's he's Steve when he's not on stage. Wait, was that meant for me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it couldn't have been meant for well, me. I thought that would go right by you, Tom. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, I would never say, well, "Thank you very much." <laughs> Oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as you know, there are hundreds, literally hundreds, of Elvis singers in, in, the, in this country. Thousands. <laughs> yeah, I know. you got to amplify that up. That's thousands. That's not hundreds. That's well, thousands. Well, well, now they have a rating for it. And Steve is constantly and uh, continually in the top ten of them. He's, uh, he's played Vegas several times. He's played in Boston, New York, um, and Memphis, and they loved him over there. And he's also went to uh, the semifinals of America's Got Talent. David Hasselhoff gave him an up. Sharon Osbourne gave him an up. But that nasty little Brit guy, Piers Morgan, <laughs> said, he did pay him a backhanded compliment. He said, you can make a living in he can make a living in Vegas the rest of his life, how good his voice is. But, uh, but uh, at least he made it that far. But uh, Steve was kind of a triple threat. I mean, he's really into music. He, not only was he uh, a great singer, he's a venue owner and gave local musicians a lot of work when he owned 
uh, the guys in Dulles. Guys in Dulles, yeah. And then he was a concert promoter, and this is where I got involved with him. I helped him produce some of the concerts, mostly of this, the 60s era. We had Moonlight Gardens, we had um, Lou Christie, Leslie Gore, Reflections, and, and there's a story, a story quick about the Reflections. The reflections, I went out to dinner with them, and they told us how they learned to sing. They went down to the local gas station, and when, you know when they had all tile bathrooms down there, so then we'd go in there to get that reverb, that's where they would practice. <laughs> And that's where they got their sound. Also, another good story about them, they were booked at the Apollo Theater uh, just because they had its own just like Romeo and Juliet. Right. And I did, and everybody did, thought they were a black group. So the Apollo Theater booked them. And they go knocking on the door there, and the guy opens up and says, who are you guys? He says, well, where are the reflections? Well, you're white. And they said, yeah, we always been. They <laughs> said, come on in. They came in and said, the crowd loved them. <laughs> but that, that, that's what uh, well, that's, uh, but my that's music talent. background. That's okay. talent. That is. Uh, yeah, you got 90% uh, black audience and they love you. Yeah. You know you got talent. That's right. Uh, but, uh, and then we did the classics for, but, uh, but uh, Steve has got a, puts on a great show. He always has uh, some of the best musicians around, guys like uh, Mickey Folger, Brian Hall on sax. So it, it'll, it'll be a great concert. Um, we're looking forward to it. And uh, uh, we do it, here's how we do it. We do it because there used to be a sport, there's a sports hall of fame in, uh, in Northern Kentucky and where a bunch of us were sitting around and been involved in music said, well, why aren't musicians honored? You know, the sports guys have played two or three years in high school, but these guys have been playing music for 30, 20, 30, 40 years. And one of the group has been playing for 50. So that's how it got together. Got together. Yeah. And also, we don't want to leave out the Brotherhood singers. Oh my gosh, you ought to hear these guys. Oh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, uh, they're gonna, they were inducted in 2017. They're coming back. Uh, to sing God Bless America. They're very patriotic and they're very spiritual, but they do sing Motown too. But uh, the, they've been honored by the Library of Congress and put on a show in Washington. They've done seven tours of Europe, including Moscow, and uh, if you're a sports fan in Cincinnati, you see them at Bengals, Reds, Games, uh, FC Cincinnati, singing the National Anthem. Yeah, when I when I met them two years back, and uh, actually one of the four years that I've emceed the show for you, and uh, met them and talked to them before the show, and and those guys were just phenomenally fantastic to me. We had a great time. We laughed a lot. We we, we just really enjoyed it. And when they sang, I mean, you could have heard a pin drop. No, you couldn't uh, really. And that's a grass field. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> a little innovation there, Archie. I got it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're on this subject up. I'm glad. 